Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the narrative lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. This is the podcast, which is not for any particular date, but it's for uh, December 2022, and it's an overview of the Gospel of Matthew. We are in the year of Matthew in the narrative lectionary. So uh, first, we're just going to tell you about a couple resources that are available and then talk briefly about a few themes in Matthew. And the first resource I want to point people to is on the uh, Working Preacher website. And it's called, it's an old article uh, from, from really almost the first, from 2010 by Arland Hultgren called um, Preaching from Matthew's Gospel, Major Themes and Forms of Teaching. And although it was written for the, uh, for the, the RCL, not the Narrative Lectionary, it still names uh, it, uh, important themes. The Kingdom of Heaven, uh, Parables as a Form of Teaching, um, The Law and Righteousness, um, the, the love ethic in, uh, in Matthew's gospel. And finally, of course, the, um, the, the reminder that this is the story of Jesus. Yes. And the, and the other resource then is, uh, uh, on enter the Bible.org. So that's kind of our sister website here at Luther seminary, uh, and enter the Bible has entries, uh, or quite a bit of information on, each of the biblical books. So if you just uh, look at Matthew, you'll see a number of things there, including an outline of Matthew, some uh, introductory issues, and some theological themes in Matthew, as well as background material. So that's a good resource to, uh, to look at as you're entering into this year of Matthew in the narrative lectionary. And although it's at the beginning of what we call the New Testament, um, Matthew's gospel intentionally ties the then present uh, 2,000 years ago to the past, uh, offering a narrative that is more a continuation and elaboration of God's ancient covenant with Israel. So repeatedly we will recognize if we're looking for it that God is fulfilling God's promise to respond to evil, vindicate the righteous, and heal all of creation through Jesus who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Jesus' birth by Mary fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah. It serves as a sign of God's faithfulness um, uh, a sign that was given to King uh, Ahaz, whose humility might be questionable. We talked about that a few weeks ago. Uh, Jesus' baptism by John fulfills a prophecy of Isaiah that attests to Jesus' identity as the Son of God. And it's a demonstration that his life will be because the Spirit is upon him. This will not be business as usual, but it should be familiar for those of us who have an imagination that is riding on the promise yet fulfilled of God. So it's appropriate that we are taking a look at this as we begin a new year, just having finished uh, Advent, um, where we begin, um, but also uh, this recognition that the echoes of what has been in the written word uh, is now being demonstrated in the word made flesh. Uh, th those themes will be throughout this reading if we are looking for them. Yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks Joy. I think that's really helpful to, to see that kind of promise and fulfillment since we are uh, moving now into the New Testament in the narrative lectionary year uh, from uh, many weeks in the Old Testament. Uh, there's there's also just some deliberate, the, there's a, these prophecy fulfillment kinds of things. Uh, there's, there's also some echoes of, uh, of figures that we've seen uh, in the Old Testament. I think particularly of uh, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, starting in chapter 5, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up uh, the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then it moves on through chapter 6 as well. Uh, you can imagine this, Jesus is a kind of new Moses here, just as Moses, uh, you know, received the law on Mount Sinai and, and gave it to the children of Israel. So Jesus now 
on this other mountain, the Mount of Beatitudes, uh, or so-called Mount of Beatitudes, um, near the Sea of Galilee, uh, now gives them uh, the the new commandments. Though it's also important to note that Jesus does not um, does not abolish the law. Uh, he says very explicitly in verse seventeen. This is five seventeen. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. So Jesus as a kind of new Moses here uh, in the Gospel of Matthew is one of those instances of a, of a kind of deliberate echo uh, of, of Old Testament figures in this Gospel. One of the uh, things that I have found the most powerful about the narrative lectionary over these uh, years since we started it is to be in one gospel from late in Advent all the way through early Easter. And especially uh, powerful for me is the way that each of the four gospels really has two parts. The epiphany part, the the coming of the Christ into human history in the incarnation, leading up to that uh, moment uh, of the transfiguration, the last Sunday in um, Epiphany every year, and and then the Gospels all turn towards Jerusalem. John, of course, does it in a different way, but uh, so that starting in chapter at seven, chapter seventeen is the transfiguration, and then the turning uh, towards Jerusalem, all uh, that language actually comes right from Luke, but it still really fits. And we'll talk about this more uh, when we get to Epiphany and then to uh, then to Lent. But it's also nice that uh, Matthew is one of the, uh, uh, the two of the synoptics that really have an Advent. And so it'll be nice uh, to at least get a Sunday or two of Advent and Christmas. It's slightly out of order, as we'll talk about in uh, in our in our first uh, our podcast here uh, for the for December eighteenth. But um, uh, I think it is worth uh, paying attention to the way that Matthew has a little bit of an Advent section. So we look forward to uh, to. Walking with you, uh, dear working preachers, uh, walking with you through the Gospel of Matthew, uh, we'll be talking more about these themes and the connections with Old Testament figures and stories uh, and prophecies. We'll be talking more about that for each of the weeks uh, in which we're in Matthew. But uh, again, we point you back to those two resources, Erlen Holtgren's uh, commentary or introduction to Matthew on the Working Preacher website and then the entries on Matthew uh, on enterthebible.org. In keeping our imagination for recognizing the faithfulness of, God, of the covenant-keeping God who was with us and is with us and will be with us until the end of the age.